Hello, hello, my beloved waking gods and goddesses. Welcome to my new YouTube channel, Love, Truth, and Beauty. Do it yourself, how to's for divine in the flesh, where your PTSDs, your pain, traumas, suffering, and dramas are golden gateways to waking up and staying awake where we learn to navigate the ups and downs of the totality of human experience in this perception-managed reality, where our seven senses in our sensual sensorial world have been squished and dumbed down into the limitations of five-sense reality as promulgated by pop culture and consensus normal reality. This is episode 13, the beautiful karmic number, lucky 13, of transformation and death in the archetypal tarot, representing transfiguration, the morphing of ugly and darkness, unconsciousness, into the sacred dance of death rebirth through engaging its partners, beauty and light and consciousness. Before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up subscribe and do hit the notification bell and the all setting so that the YouTube will let you know when we upload next. Please also comment and share this video if you know someone who would benefit from this offering. I upload videos Tuesdays and Fridays 2 p.m. Eastern. My name is Maria West, and I am your hostess of the highest, here to download, upload, inspire, and usher you into your bestest and brightest selves, your bestest and brightest light, inviting you all to open your hearts wider and wider still. In this video, I teach you four processes to clear and release the energy signatures of every lover you've ever had. That's right, kids. The good, the bad, the ugly, the evil, the heartbreakers. The ones we can't get enough of. Okay? Because we don't want to cling to any experience so that we can be total in our freedom. In every aspect of our lives. Especially in sexuality. In my last video, I presented my declaration that we are all programmed to be sex slaves. However that manifests in your life is going to be unique to you. So I urge you all to move into a space of acceptance and self-forgiveness and forgiveness of these souls who we've shared our bodies and our energies with. We are not here to judge, but to empower one another to move forward and to transform even the most horrific of experience regarding our sexuality into a resource, a source of strength and wisdom and wokeness, all aspects of the true woke human being. It is my intention to elevate all of our direct experiences into the effulgent lightness of being and the brightness and clarity of self-awareness. So first, let's all get into our cozy, comfy places as I first lead us on a guided grounding and healing meditation in preparation for the fertile ground to heal and release and take back our powers and our creative sexual energies from all our former and past lovers. So as per usual, please light a candle or two. Get yourself situated into your cozy, comfy places with pillows and blankets. Have your water or tea ready, tissues, your journals, and pens close by. So let's all close our eyes and let's all receive a deep breath in. And let it out, allowing yourselves to fully arrive and land here right now, wherever you are, as you are right now. Allow your breath to fill your body with life force energy, pranic energy of all colors, trusting your body to receive the colors that it needs to move you into greater clarity and relaxation. 
That's it, my loves. Nice and easy. Breathing in your own timing, in your own way. Breathing in the love that you are. Exhaling out more love. Knowing that whatever you're feeling, even any kinds of negative sensations, that breathing into your heart allows your heart to metabolize these feelings, these feelings of negativity, of self-doubt. That's it, my loves. Keep breathing. Breathing in your own timing, in your own way. On a huge inhale, bring your palms together, pressing them into the front of your chest. And just feel into your chest. And on an exhale, feel your body relax and let go, dropping your awareness from your mind into your body. And as you do so, move your hands off your chest Pressing your palms together into a namaste or prayer position. Noticing any bodily sensations and just allowing them to be. Breathing in and out the love that you are. On a huge inhale... Move your palms still in a namaste or prayer or appreciation position in front of your heart and move your palms so that you move them just in front of the most sensitive part of your heart, trusting that you know where this sensitive part is, trusting in your knowing, even if you feel like you've no idea what you're doing. This sensitivity, my loves, that you are feeling is your closure to love. So just notice it and just allow this closure. It's just based on fear. And this acknowledgement allows your heart to naturally relax. Just let it open and radiate the love that you are and always have been. Consider that any pain in your heart or heartache is about your mind telling your body and telling you to close to love, to close to connection. The natural state of our hearts is open and closure of our hearts is unnatural. And that's why... It's so painful. Notice your heart opening, my loves. Feel into your heart opening naturally. Feel the glorious relief to be open as you are. An expression of divine love. You are love in a body. You are the divine in the flesh. Keep breathing, my beloveds. Allow yourselves to revel in the awareness that you are experiencing. Magnify your awareness. Linger in the sweetness of being aware. Nothing for you to do except be that awareness. Whatever's happening for you, allow it to be as it is. There's nothing for you to do or figure out except just be and witness, allowing any thoughts to come and go like a breeze, just noticing them, noticing your breath and its natural rhythm, its own pacing, noticing the sensations of your body this miraculous and beautiful temple of you as waking god or waking goddess, you as the divine in the flesh, breathing deeply, resting and abiding 
in this profound stillness and silence. Let us co-create a grid of electric violet light surrounding us all in all directions over the curvature of our planet, setting the intention that all energies and entities, tribal and matrix system realities, hormo-morphogenetic fields alike, including inter, intra extra dimensional portals and doorways that may have opened, perhaps blocking and interfering with our erotic natures, that they be instantly dissolved and or returned to our sources, knowing and embodying our divinity of being source, God, Goddess, all that is, infinite loving awareness and consciousness, ever being, ever evolving, ever becoming, having a human experience, all for the highest good the deepest possible truth, the innermost clarity and peace, and most profound of healing. And so it is. Aho Jaima. Amen. And when you are ready, you can slowly open your eyes. And as you readjust and look around you, wherever you are, I invite you to pull in your consciousness through your sense of sight, your eyes, and what you see into the middle of your head. Notice the soft, focused nature of what you are seeing. And if you want, you can play with this, gently moving back and forth from this heightened awareness reality to normal reality. And check out the difference for yourself. This is a great way to remain still and aware while it's interfacing with the outside world and maintaining a deep relationship to your true self, the silence within, so as to not get caught up in the whirlwind and the pendulum swing of the chaos of conventional reality, the status quo, normal reality of one thing after another, after another, after another, or perhaps sleepwalking through life, being on autopilot, unaware. One of the main reasons to practice regular meditation is to be better able to stay still and aligned and vertical so as not to lose one's proverbial shit in the middle of times when we are feeling highly reactive and perhaps overly identified by outer circumstances or by the world at large public altercations happening in real time, mob mentality crowds, the traffic, the stresses of trying to keep up with the endless things to do on our many, many, many lists. Utilizing meditation allows us to practice the art of dialing things down, practicing de-escalation, calming our nervous systems, contain our energies and not lose power, especially when the unexpected happens, when shit hits the fan and life happens, when spirit calls us to release the past presently so that we can move forward in certain aspects of our lives that perhaps have been holding us back. Perhaps we've been avoiding these aspects. I want to start with some brief readings from my book, Left Wide Open, The Rude Awakening of the Heart-Based New Humanity. I want to share with you my experiences. And um, I want to start here with a section called Objectifying the Goddess. Tabloid blogs and online social media constantly feed starstruck consumers with the dirty laundry relationship woes and rehab dilemmas of celebrities, politicians, and spiritual leaders. And let's not forget the media's fixation on exploiting women as sexual objects, which is not only entertainment, but big business in the billions and billions and billions of dollars. And its most basic level, the enormous financial sex success of pornography, whether online, including all the dark net, dark, web, etc., 
all those levels, and in sex clubs, massage parlors, strip clubs, and global government religion sanctioned sex slavery, human trafficking. This is a testament to the demands of unconscious man and his appetite for sexual entertainment at the expense of woman and her children. And mind you, women profit from this. Women all over the world who are still mind-controlled to seek an inflated sense of self through collective, unconscious male affirmation rather than real love and reclaiming their self-worth internally become unwitting puppets of the patriarchy, matriarchy polarity and voluntarily line up by the millions to parade in front of the world as the latest sex objects of sexual desire and perceived adoration, only to be easily replaced by the next selections. Next. Ironically, on a cosmic spiritual level, it is man's natural desire to worship woman as the goddess and all forms of the feminine and woman's deepest yearning as goddess to be worshipped and seen as beauty and light by man and all forms of the masculine that fuels the seemingly unconscious obsessive compulsion in both man and woman to participate in prostitution, sex slavery, and all forms of pornography. The only real difference between a man paying to have sex with a prostitute, who, by the way, is an incarnation of the goddess, so check your judgments, please, and man making love with his beloved woman or feminine essence partner, or between a strip club and an ancient goddess temple of worship, is the embodiment of consciousness within everyone's heart, mind, and body. Whether you call it sex, fucking, or making love, the pull for sexual union has its anchoring in the cosmic spiritual realm. The participants either know this or they don't, depending on their level of consciousness and awareness. Years ago, as a professional exotic and Middle Eastern dancer and performer, I was highly conscious of the immense pleasure and power I harnessed and expressed through my body and how those divine energies were received by my at times predominantly male audience. I witnessed men and women falling to their knees eyes wet with devotion and intensely feeling love and worship of the goddess herself directed toward the she in me. The experience was profoundly spiritual and erotic and yet so much guilt and shame was thrown into the mix by both men and women along with the judgment and sanctimonious holier-than-thou attitudes. I experienced a handful of disturbing experiences with men who were particularly triggered by my ethnicity and took it upon themselves to hurl their rage and expletives at me with extreme gusto. I eventually realized that the energetic feeding frenzy of desire from my audience for my form whether generated from innocence and admiration, sexual deviance, or from negative thought forms and psychic entity attachments hopped up on drugs and alcohol proved to be more than manageable for myself. Imagine the enormity of the collective energetic frequencies derived from unconscious sexual entertainment from the basis emotional reactivity of guilt, shame, humiliation, or anger and judgment to an insatiable lust that degenerates into thoughts and fantasies of sexual perversion, violent assault, and torture. I learned to energetically clear and clean myself up after each performance and regularly practice this ritual of spiritual and energetic hygiene or suffered the energetic consequences of bringing various members of my family, ha, huh, my family, as in my own sexual tribal programming, and members of my audience, along with their lust and entities, home with me. 
my very first energy mastery workshop was actually designed for performing artists wanting to go stealth and shield themselves from intrusive energy projections from their audience and to enhance their performance abilities. So earlier I made the statement that we are all programmed to be sex slaves from the moment we are conceived. And given all our historical, tribal, religious, family, media, societal programs and influences, it's not surprising that most of us are confused when it comes to sexuality and love. If love is potentially so tragic, why bother? Why not settle for just no strings attached sex with everyone and anyone? Why not settle for being a sex object of desire? Isn't any attention better than none? What? Why not fuck as many people as we can or abstain forever? Why not remain in the shallow? Why not? Because it's not what we really want. It's not what we're truly yearning and aching for. We are being called to something deeper, greater, and sweeter. Sexual empowerment and sexual promiscuity are often confused as the same thing. While both can generate the same feelings of disease, dissatisfaction, and or emptiness once the high of a great makeout session or orgasm wears off, sexual empowerment is based more on the choice, on a choice, than dysfunction. Many of today's young women already realize that acting like a sex-obsessed man who hook up with everyone in sight may not be a good idea after all. Maybe sexual freedom and sexual empowerment are really just fancy names for unsatisfying, indiscriminate sex that leaves them feeling depressed, empty, exhausted, and longing for a real connection, real love. And But yet the experts who study sexual biochemistry and neurochemistry lead us to believe that we are simply drones to our body's innate chemistry and gender. But even seemingly unconscious men and unconscious women feel something is missing. They're not just, they're just not self-aware enough to articulate what that something is. Whether we hold on to our predetermined roles to secure the status quo of man taking care of woman or take ourselves out of relationship possibilities altogether and into isolation or even endeavor to create relationships based on equality with our like-hearted, like-minded partners, we all know something is fucking missing. At some point, while sleepwalking aimlessly through the gap between isolation and love-based sexual connections, some of us are shaken awake. Divine providence shines down in a poignant conscious moment of clarity. Woman's body and responses are physical and sexual mirrors to man's. Our vaginas actually mimic a very hard penis, rigid and at times desensitized in its need for harsh, over-the-top stimulation, rough sex, and violent penetration. As women, we often mistake such hard, harshness for passion, but deep down, we know something's off and out of balance. The pain and detachment of fast, rough sex is synonymous to the phenomenon of cutting. The sight of blood pouring from a self-inflicted wound blatantly reminds us that perhaps at least we might feel something, maybe. My sister goddesses frequently share that their deeply embedded grief, triggered and released through core-level sobbing and kriyas, or outward bodily manifestations of spontaneous kundalini energy movements resulted from opening with the tender touch and slow, gentle, deep, penetrating loving of conscious man. I too have personally experienced this bittersweet outpouring of deep sorrow and relieved elation in the rarity of being in the presence of conscious man not from his sexual technique, but but from his meeting me in the real, unhurried and deep, where time becomes timeless. My journey also illumined my own empowerment of sustaining and supporting the continuing unraveling of the painful tensions and traumas of my past, 
caught up in my body and tissues. As with all women, we are each required to gently discover and heal through our own embodied inner masculine as he, in service to the inner feminine, consciously and openly, lovingly opening our hearts and yonis to receive. And if there is any unconsciousness or energetic distortions, he won't engage your opening because he protects and serves her. The truth is that the pain we feel isn't just the result of aggressive penetration of an unconscious penis, but actually the closure of our yonis from the cumulative energies dumped into us from unconscious sex and also the result of not being fully loved and opened by a conscious man or conscious masculine essence in gay, lesbian, or bisexual coupling, etc. Only he, this includes woman's own inner masculine who's turned into her inner feminine's desires and yearnings that is tuned in, has the power to take on and dissolve her entire past held inside her deepest of sacred places. Many of us discover that even if we could achieve earth-shattering, mind-blowing, squirty orgasms generated within our own erotic fantasies and imagination, or the result of opening to the promise of love through a skillful lover, we would still continue to feel disturbed, upset, dirty, frustrated, sad, depressed, unfulfilled, or just plain used when the high of pleasure wears off. How can this be? What the fuck is going on? We ask the same questions every time the empty feelings arise. The questions and feelings can be blown off and ignored, but sooner or later, we are confronted with the need to stop, step back, get real, and reflect upon what we're doing to ourselves. Reality check. We have all taken on the energy signatures of every person we've ever had sex with along with every person they've had sex with as well. Yeah, do the math, face the truth, but do so without guilt, shame, or judgment. Hold yourself in tenderness and love. We love our stories of the past and simultaneously hate them. Sometimes we defend those stories, upholding them to the death. We're filled with Everything from longing to anger, frustration, guilt, and shame, from self-hate to lust that can't be quelled, quenched, or satisfied. We allowed ourselves to engage in unconscious sex with unconscious man or unconscious woman repeatedly and intentionally, and to embody unconscious woman or unconscious man, we must, we wanted attention any kind of attention, and his adoration, her adoration, devotion, and love. We thought unconscious sex would dampen down the nervous frenetic energy entrapped in us, both men and women. Perhaps we thought it was love, or would bring us closer to love, to him, to her. He promised it was love. She promised it was love. Or maybe he's the one, she's the one. So we just try it one more time. Maybe if we don't be so quick to judge him or her. Yet on the awakened side, maybe we're finally fed up and just withdraw from the whole scene. Maybe it's time to step back and re reflect on healing without shutting down our hearts and our yonis, our penises. Perhaps we can remain open and hopeful by looking deeply beyond the wounds in our hearts including our yonis and penises, and our body minds and into the divine. Part of the inner work for woman and man is about woman and man getting to know her, his own inner feminine and inner masculine. And through this core collaborative foundational relationship, woman and man gets to know every inch, nook, and cranny of her, his body, mind, and the wisdom of her, his heart, yoni, and penis. 
This work is deeply intimate, gentle, and slow. So as unconscious woman, unconscious man awakens and embodies their divinity, giving rise to conscious man, conscious woman, who now ascends, takes flight, and dances in the sky, he, she, as Dakini Daka, are the female, male embodiment of enlightened energy. She, he, dances. She is form sky dancing through the formless, he. And so the healing begins when she, he, decides to consciously descend and fully incarnate into form, fully embodying her life, his life, as the physical expressions of conscious woman to match up to conscious man who awaits after doing his own deep inner work. So as he has suffered as well in his quest to dissolve this programming of perpetrator and victim unconsciousness. Now, regardless of whether you are a man or woman or a combination of both, here's my how to and do it yourself as to what you can do to begin the work in releasing any kind of energy attachments within you and you onto another of this sexual energy. So the first one is a journaling exercise. So I I want you to put aside some private time, at least several hours, and create a sacred union altar with crystals and meaningful symbols, talismans, light a candle, some incense, and make a list of everyone you've ever had sex with. And allow the various feelings and thoughts to arise and record them. After you make your list, take a few moments or a bunch of time with each name, sending them love, blessings, and gratitude. Even if they were assholes, okay? Because they have contributed to the person that you are now and the person that you are going to be in the near future. And I want you to journal about what arises for each name. Keep writing until you feel complete. And if you can't remember a name or don't know it, journal about what comes up from that. If the thoughts and feelings that arise are uncomfortable and unpleasant, imagine a beam of pure electric violet light emanating from your center into the planet, allowing these feelings to connect to this beam of pure electric violet light penetrating Gaia, our planet, and allow Gaia, our planet, to transform these feelings and thoughts into healing energy for one and all, especially for yourself. Send out the energy of love and acceptance, self-forgiveness and forgiveness to anyone on this list who triggers bad feelings within you or for whom you harbor a grievance, perhaps some payback, some vengeance. Remember that any unfinished business keeps you apart from your true divine nature. Express your pain and process Through creativity, paint, sculpt, write, sing, play music, dance, etc. Remember that creativity often is inspired and expressed during times of challenge, pain, and suffering. Journal freely about what attracted you to particular lovers, what you received from them, and what you gifted them. Journal freely about lovers who repulsed you, dissolving any guilt or intense feelings of shame that arise. Journal freely about lovers who confused you. These are the lovers you felt attracted to, repulsed by, and or with whom you experienced intense sexual arousal and pleasure. The intent of this exercise is to dissolve and unravel any guilt, shame, 
and self-judgment around these erotic experiences, around those desires, those wants, those obsessions. This particular set of journaling exercises frees up an inordinate amount of energy stuck in the body cells and tissues and gently opens and relaxes our hearts, our yonis, and phalluses. Remember to burn your journals. These papers, don't hang on to them once you are complete. Be gentle with yourself. Easy does it, my beloveds. The second practice is the practice of heart meditation, also known as Tonglen meditation. And in fact, it is my very, very, very first video. So the link to our very first video of this guided meditation is in the description box. Our hearts and breath are powerful tools in transmuting difficult feelings and emotions. By breathing these feelings and emotions into the heart, which is the most powerful organ of our physical bodies, they are dissolved and transformed by the power of love into more love and exhaled out through the breath as more love to be shared. So gift yourself sufficient time for this beautiful practice. You may find that utilizing this practice before sleeping results in deeper, restful sleep and well-rested waking. Feel free to experiment. The third process is the venting anger process. This is my all-time favorite practice in consciously venting anger, rage, and frustration. And what you're going to do is you're going to get in your car and you're going to drive it somewhere safe and secluded. You're going to park it. You're going to feel in your ang into your anger and rage and you're going to let it rip. You're going to scream your fucking head off. No holds barred. You're going to cuss like a sailor and you're going to get to say whatever you have to say to the person or person's or to whatever pattern you're going to cry, do not edit or water it down or hold back. Yell and scream until you feel complete. You may actually lose your voice the very first time around, but as you practice this, you will notice your voice getting stronger and clearer. I've had singers and performers tell me that this exercise has actually allowed them to expand their vocal range. So that's something, that's cool. Your throat chakra holds your superpower. This is your fifth chakra. It holds your superpower that is in charge of telling your truth and living your truth. So don't hold back. You are consciously and safely venting your anger, rage, and frustration and everything else rather than dumping those feelings, those energies and emotions onto your cat, your dog, your kids, your beloved, or within your house by slamming doors and cupboards or in traffic engaging in road rage, my loves. Afterward, you can burn sage or palo santo or you can use the spray versions to clear out your car of any remaining toxic energy. And if you don't have a car, you can do this exercise screaming into pillows or at mirrors. Happy venting, my loves. The fourth exercise is the body painting clearing ritual. This is extremely powerful. This is an extremely powerful process, love bugs, and engages our superpowers of our first and second chakras associated with manifestation, safety, creativity, sexuality, enjoyment, being in the senses, abundance and prosperity. Okay, so, and by utilizing the respective colors of red and orange, you're going to need to purchase from an art supply store non-toxic body paints in red and orange. And these are really inexpensive. They're about $1.39, I believe. I believe that's how much I paid for each of mine. The process is simple. You're going to put on some music that evokes, invokes intense emotion that represents the totality of the way you feel about a certain sexually dysfunctional pattern 
or perhaps a certain person you want to clear out of your morphogenetic field or the, your matrix regarding your sexuality. Then you're going to remove all your clothing and using the body paints, making sure your carpets and floors are protected, paint your body. Trust your sixth chakra superpower of intuition to know how, how much, and where to paint your body. Utilizing the intention to clear and purify any dark and discordant, distorted, fucked up energies left over from being touched inappropriately or perhaps being assaulted or perhaps you've been obsessed and addicted um, to a certain touch from an abuser or cheater or user, whatever your circumstance this body painting clearing ritual is so, so good. After you paint your body, allow it to dry, dance around in wild abandon, cry, and when you're ready, get into a hot shower and let the paint go down the drain. Wash it off. Imagine all your pain and suffering and disempowerment. Everything about this about what it is that you are intending to clear, go down the drain where it's transformed into healing and empowerment for yourself and for the other human suffering from perhaps a similar situation and pain. You're going to use fragrant soaps and shampoos, wash your hair and your body, and when you are complete, get out of the shower and slather yourself. Anoint your body with a nice lotion and or body oil loving yourself up and appreciating yourself trusting your healing and wholeness celebrating your renewed innocence and purity of heart mind and body with your divinity declaring 10 times aham prema i am divine love aham prema i am divine love Aham Prema, I am divine love. 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 Aham Prema. I am divine love. Okay, my lovey doves, that's all for this video. Please be gentle with yourselves, with your process. Allow yourselves to receive help from a beloved and trustworthy, loving friend to witness you undergo this great inner work. Please feel free to comment or write me with any questions or concerns. My contact information is in the description box below. I have included also in the description box a helpful link for the Ho'oponopono forgiveness practice. And also my first book, both the first and second editions are available. The links are below if you would like to get receive them and also if you'd like a free digital download of my very first edition all you got to do is simply email me and i'll send you the link ask and it is given so until next time my loves be the love that you are enjoy your breath enjoy your body here's to love truth and beauty Mwah! <laughs>